Welcome back, this is Paramedic Project and thanks for joining us once again. Uh, last episode we talked about GCS calculations, the importance of doing that accurately and consistently. Um, today I really want to expand on GCS calculation a little bit and uh, acknowledge a, uh, a set of patients that might normally fall outside of normal GCS calculations. And that's patients um, who, uh, who might not have the same GCS as us when they're, when they're, when they're alert and normally for them. So it's important to really acknowledge uh, the normal GCS for that patient. And that might mean uh, on scene having a conversation with a family member or a carer, um, reading through some nursing home notes possibly to find out um, what this patient's normal conscious state is. And then of course um, when we're calculating the patient's GCS we need to take that into account. And, uh, and when we're communicating this in a handover we also need to communicate it appropriately. So that means that often we won't be able to assign a number or a set of numbers to this patient's GCS or their conscious state, but we may have to uh, actually describe it. Now if these patients are aphasic normally after a stroke, for example, then, um, then really they, their normal GCS has got a verbal score of one. So it's really important to acknowledge that and, uh, and actually explain that in a handover process rather than just assigning them a number. So, um, so stroke patients, patients with degenerative brain disorders, patients with traumatic brain injuries, uh, dementia patients, these are all patients that, um, that we go out to regularly and uh, we can't often uh, just do a normal GCS calculation and a normal GCS assessment on them. So it's really important to acknowledge that, that not all our patients are exactly the same as us neurologically and, uh, and to not exclude those patients from really solid uh, pre-hospital care and really solid uh, patient assessment. So that's the first thing. Second thing I'd like to talk about today is really um, an extension of that conversation on scene with a family member or a carer and, uh, and to acknowledge the patient's living circumstances. And really uh, that might be a conversation or it might even be just having a look at, their, uh, at your surroundings on scene, taking a step back from the patient and actually, uh, and actually looking at the patient's living circumstances to see A, whether they've got appropriate care, uh, B, it might give you a really good idea about how mobile the patient is, whether they've got appropriate mobility aids, uh, aids in their residence. Um, and, uh, and then C, it's really going to uh, allow us to, to start advocating for the patient. And by that I mean that in this, uh, in this patient's care, um, the, the paramedic is really the person that gets the opportunity to be in the patient's home and, and get that snapshot. Um, so it's important that we convey that to the emergency department because they're the next step in the process of making sure this patient has uh, appropriate levels of ongoing care and, um, and really it's our role that at some stage in the handover that we communicate the patient's normal mobility, uh, whether they've got appropriate mobility aids, whether they've got appropriate living circumstances and levels of care um, for their uh, past medical history. Um, so, you know, the typical paramedic role is one where we're saving someone's life, but you've got to remember that uh, not only that, not all our patients are like that. A lot of these patients, we're just seeing them in their, in their normal living circumstances and that is also really important information uh, that we need to convey in our handover. So there are the two big points for today. Acknowledge the patient's normal conscious state by adjusting your GCS uh, calculation and assessment. And also acknowledge the patient's living circumstances and, uh, and start incorporating that into your clinical handover uh, so the patient can get appropriate, uh, appropriate ongoing care. So thanks for joining us once again. Find us on social media and uh, we'll see you next time.